Do you happen to remember the book David Copperfield, written by Charles Dickens? Uh, when I was a kid in um, in school, uh, junior high, I believe it was required reading. We all had to pick up Charles Dickens and read it. Even to this day, I can remember one character in particular. Now, just let's do this little test. You know, we're talking about humility, and we're also talking about David Copperfield, written by Charles Dickens. So who comes to mind when we start talking about humility it, as you're thinking about the book David Copperfield? I hope you can recall this. I hope you remember your required book reading. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you guys didn't have to read it. Maybe it was just my uh, English teacher that taught me to read this. Well, anyway, the one character in particular that really stood out for me as I was uh, reading this book, David Copperfield, it was the character of Uriah Heep. And, and no, it's not the musical group, but the character in, in Dickens' book, Uriah Heep. As, as Charles Dickens described Uriah Heep, um, he said Uriah was a timid, sheepish man who pretended to have qualities that he did not. Uh, you know, remember this? Uriah would always go around and say, I'm humble. I'm oh so humble. And I, and I remember thinking to myself, it's humble. But anyway. Hey, newsflash, you are not humble just because you say you are. In fact, <laughs> the truly humble person doesn't even dwell on themselves. They're focused on doing all that they can for the Lord. So we're going to examine that thought in just a moment, taking a look at a passage out of 1 Corinthians. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I'll be back in just a moment. My name is Pastor Greg, and you're watching Transforming the World. So according to the Apostle Paul, a, uh, a, a person can be confident, bold, and outspoken, and yet still be humble. If you consider his words, the, Paul writes this, 1 Corinthians 15, 10. Uh, what Paul basically says there is he accepted who he was, and he did not constantly apologize for himself. He understood who he was in the eyes of God, he had been ransomed by Christ and called by Christ to labor for Christ. And yet, Paul still displayed humility. He understood that who he became was the product of God and God's grace. Well, one of the marks of biblical humility is understanding that, um, that who we are in Christ is the result of God's mercy. Now, like, like Paul... And like myself, you know, maybe, maybe we have a past that we are ashamed of. But in spite of that past, we continue to serve the Lord. We continue to do what we can for the Lord in the Lord's name, for the Lord's glory. Uh, we don't refuse to serve him simply because we have a past, simply because we may have done something that was wrong. But true humility recognizes that you know, God is in the process of transforming us so that that we might actually begin serving him. And it's not like God looked at us and said, man, I need somebody of great and noble character. I need somebody I can really lean on. And he looks around the earth hunting for someone. It's not That's not how the way that God works. God basically looks for, I'm hunting for willing hearts to allow me to transform them into an individual that I can work through. And, and, and it's important for us. This is biblical humility. It truly is. Humility that says, God, God is the one who has worked in me so that I am equipped um, and so that I might actually do for the Lord, uh, serve the Lord, you know, in spite of who I am or who I was. And Paul modeled this, and he, he, he talks about this here in 1 Corinthians 15. Now, being hesitant, being a Uriah Heap, in other words, being self-effacing and modest does not make you humble. But too often, this is our opinion of humility. And it causes a lot of Christians to sit idle on the sidelines rather than, than um, um, faithfully and diligently fulfilling their responsibilities. 
you know, what what did Jesus observe as he looked out across Galilee? Uh, Matthew 9, 37, he says, the harvest is plentiful, the workers are few. And I, I tell you the truth, looking at the world today, I believe Jesus is saying this, the exact same thing. People need to hear the good news of Jesus. Yet, with feigned humility, like Uriah Heep, a lot of people come along and say, well, I'm, I'm not worthy to, to, to do anything for God. Uh, I, I can't serve God. I can't serve God in his kingdom. Uh, I refuse, you know, because I don't want to push myself out there in front of people. I'm afraid of becoming proud, so I'm not going to serve. I'll just let somebody more qualified serve. That, and that's feigned humility. They, they come across like this, you're right heap. Oh, I'm too humble. I'm oh so humble. I can't do this. I'm just a meek little man. Oh, shut up. Sorry. <laughs> Can we edit that? <laughs> but I hear that so often. That's feigned humility. That's not true biblical humility. And a person comes along and says, oh, I can't help serve. I'm humble. I'm much too humble. You can serve. You can recognize who you are in the eyes of God. And you can understand that God has taken who you are and has transformed you into somebody that has value and worth. And, uh, and still be humble. You, we have to remember this. We have to keep this in mind. The humble Christian diligently and faithfully serves the Lord, desiring that the Lord be glorified. The humble Christian defers all praise to God who worked through them by his grace. In other words, biblical humility recognizes, number one, that we are valuable in God's eyes, as we mentioned yesterday, and that by his transforming power, God has changed us into a vessel for his honor. Uh, Paul writes this, 2 Timothy uh, 2.21. The Lord has changed us and prepared us to do good works in his name. And as we serve him, we recognize that it is by his grace that God is glorified. Not I, but the grace of God that is in me. Again, 1 Corinthians 15.10. Um Look at question number nine on the self-evaluation section. This is a good question. Do I accept jobs that are difficult for me because I want to learn from God? I want to learn to trust God? Or do we refuse because we don't think that we can do them? Please, my friend, do not turn down a servant's role. Do not turn down a servant role in the church because it makes you uncomfortable we serve so that God may be honored not to be recognized for our skills and our talents. So please keep that in mind. Well, tomorrow we're going to take a look at a, a tremendous lesson on humility that comes from the Old Testament book of Zechariah. Hope you can join us. We'll continue to explore a biblical model of humility tomorrow on Transform Your World. So good to be with you again today. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.